Okay, so let's get into the practice exam for Excel Chapter 3. Again, I'm assuming you have going to highlight or uncheck training and projects. Assuming you had a chance to go through the demo lesson for Chapter 3. And again, my intent here is that you will have gone through the questions on the practice exam already. Don't just spoon feed yourself and watch my video and do the questions at the same time. You don't get the benefit of the learning. Well, I say that every time. Do I not? Yes, I do. So in this particular practice exam, we have 25 questions. And let's see when this is going to load. Is it going to load? I hope it's. All right. Rotate the contents of the cells in range B3 through H4. To exactly 60 degrees, which is four points up and to the left of the zero degrees degree marker on the orientation arc. Oh my goodness, why don't we right click on this range and format cells? That's one way to do it. All right, and we're going to go to alignment. All right, alignment it says we want to go to 60 degrees, four points up and to the left of zero. So, what they're saying here is if I take my marker go up four points i'm going to hit 60 degrees so the text is going to be at an angle like that that's question one all right on to question two use autofill to fill range d4 through d18 with only the formatting from cell d4 okay now we might not have covered this in the demo so here we go we're in d4 we're going to use our fill handle Drag down. You might see it. Might see this on the project as well. Drag down to D18, okay. And usually when you do this, you get a bunch of nonsense. Which is in this case is it's all fives. Weird. Why did we do that? Well, we didn't want to do the contents. We just wanted to do the formatting. So you want to click on your autofill options and say fill formatting only. There you go. And you may see that on the project. Copy the values, the number formatting, but not the underlying formulas of cell K4 through K6 into the range B4 to B6. Again, might not have seen this on the demo. K4 through K6, that's over here, white cross. Let's get my instructions out of the way. K4 through K6, all right? Let's copy, control C, which we can do, okay? Let's go over here and select B4 through B6. And I don't see anything in my paste thing up here in my clipboard. Let's try that again. K4 through K6. I'm going to right click this time and copy. There we go. Come over here to B4 through B6. And here we're pasting the values. So it's not going to be any formulas. It's going to be the values and the number formatting. So I'm going to come over here to my paste options, right? And here we have formulas, formulas and number formatting. No, I don't want the formulas. Um, let's see, right here, values and number formatting. So it's going to bring the formatting with it, but it's going to paste just the values, hard-coded numbers without the formulas. For your paste options. Okay. Using the keyboard, enter the value 14% in cell B8. Okay, let's scroll down here to B8. Include the percent sign. Here we're just putting in 14% in our check mark. Right on. Yay. Okay, enter a formula in cell C5. That divides the value in cell B5 by the value in cell B15. Using an absolute cell reference in cell B15 or, or for cell B15. So I'm coming down here to C5. It says equals. Start every formula with equals. It says edit to the formula C5 dividing by um, actually B5. So I'm going to click on B5 divided by and scroll down a little bit to B15. Okay. And I should, up in my formula bar, just put my mouse pointer somewhere on B15. And again, absolute means no matter where I copy that formula, it is going to stay pointed at B15. 
this case looks like I'm doing a percentage of this particular item divided by the total. So I want to hit my function key for F4, get an absolute reference there. Again, if you missed the whole thing about absolute references, go back and watch my review video on that, the beginning of this chapter three unit. Enter button to record the formula. Okay, enter a formula in cell E4 using the if function. I love this one. Okay, again, if then else statement. We've covered this in the demo. All right, I need to come up here to my function wizard, insert function. You should already see if up there. And again, if then else, there's some sort of a logic test. If it's true, we're going to do one thing. If it's not, we're going to do something else. It says is, it says it returns a value of yes if D4 is greater than 25. Okay, there is that clue right there that we're looking for is D4 greater than 25. Okay, D4 greater than 25. If that's true, we're going to say yes. By the way, left hand less than. Hold out your hands in front of you, by the way. Hold out your hands in front of you. Put each of them in a, pull out your, what, your index finger and your thumb. So they're pointed like signs. The one on the left is the less than sign. The one on the right is the greater than sign. I guess I have to make a video for that, don't I? Maybe I'll do that at the beginning of this unit. Value of true, if D4 is greater than 25, we're going to say yes. I guess it's going to be uppercase. Yes. Caps lock. Yes. And if it's false, no, whoops. There we go. It's false. No. All right. If then else statement. Okay. All righty. Question seven. Insert a column type spark line in cell B7. Cell B7. Right here. Using the data range B4 to B6. Okay. So insert. And over here in my spark lines. I'm going to look for a column spark line based on data range and its insertion points waiting for me to select the data range. I'm going to select B4 to B6 and OK. OK, nice. Change the style of the spark line in cell B7 to orange spark line style accent 6, darker 25. Wow, it's a mouthful. B7, Sparkline Tools Design tab. Um, what's this right here? Orange Sparkline Style Accent 6, Darker 25. There it is right there. I was just kind of guessing. Click on that to change the color of your spark line. To the spark lines in range J4 through J6, added a orange marker to the high point and add a red marker to the low point. Here we're getting really fancy. I'm going to select J4 through J6. They really want you to know spark lines. And we're going to say marker color, high point, um, orange marker, standard colors orange. Uh, marker color, low point, standard colors red. Okay. Wow, that was... We're getting really fancy there. Use the format painter, question 10. Use the format painter to apply the formatting from cell A3 to B3 through D3. So I'm going to come over here and select A3. Double click on my format painter. Again, it's locked and loaded. Now when you bring your mouse pointer down, you can see that paintbrush following it. I'm going to left click and hold, drag from B3 to D3. And there we have it. Okay. And well, then we just click off somewhere. How's that sound? Uh, that looks good to me. We turn off the format painter, I guess. How about that? Oh, it says retry this task. Okay, let's try it again. Maybe they just want me to click on it once. I'm just going to click on it once this time. If you double click on it, it's locked and loaded. Click on it once, it's a one time use. So I'm going to left click and hold. It says B3 through D3. Drag through that range. Okay, I guess that's what they wanted me to do. They didn't want me to double click. Oh well. Insert a 3D clustered column chart 
in the worksheet based on A3 through I6. Okay, so I'm going to select that range that I'm creating a chart on. And I'm going to say insert. Is this under recommended charts? I'm going to guess. Uh, what's this? Uh, clustered bar. Clustered column. Stack line. No, it's not liking that. I'm going to click over on all charts. And we're in clustered column. And where's our 3D clustered column here? Chart title. Column chart. Here, let's start over again. I kind of got lost there. Let's come over here to column charts. There we go. I'll kind of find my way here. 3D clustered column. There we go. Here's our chart. Okay, that took some doing. All right, using the mouse, move the bar chart so that the upper left corner of the chart border is over cell D1. So I'm just going to move this chart out of the way. Get our four-headed arrow down there. We're going to drag it so the upper left-hand corner is in cell D1, like so. That was question 12. Question 13, enter the text workshop participants in the column chart. Click on chart title. I'm going to triple click. Select the whole thing. Workshop participants. Then it's going to click off somewhere into the chart somewhere. Record the chart title. All right. Question 14 in the clustered column chart. Move the chart legend to the bottom position. Okay. Maybe not something we explicitly covered in the demo, but here we go. Once we are ready with our question, what's going on? Sam, where'd you go? Okay. All right. Click on our chart. Okay. Chart tools design tab. And let's switch over to the format tab. And let's see here. I am looking for the legend position. I think that's back on design tab. Um, add chart element, quick layout. What if we come down here and right click on our legend and format legend? I'm doing this live, by the way. Come on, give me a break. All right. We want to have the chart legend in the bottom position. Click on bottom. I can just close out that task pane and the legend will move to the bottom of the page. Okay. On the column chart, add the title participants to the vertical, vertical axis and the title workshop type to the horizontal axis. Then click on the chart. So let's click on the chart. Let's go to our chart elements tab. Axis titles. Looks like we're doing vertical, primary vertical first. And there's that. I'm just going to triple click on it and say participants participants whoops I didn't like that let's try that again so click on our chart and chart elements and access titles fly out menu primary vertical primary vertical axis triple click to select it like I did. Par -tis <sighs> participants. Participants. Okay. Then click on chart elements again. Axis titles. Primary horizontal. Let's move my instructions out of the way. Scroll down a little bit. What are we calling this guy? calling this workshop title. So I'm going to triple click on that. And we're going to type in workshop type, I should say. Workshop type. And just click on my chart again to record those two titles. Okay, great. Question 16. Change the text direction of the vertical axis title number of participants to horizontal. Okay. I'm going to click on that chart title. Maybe I'll right click and format chart title or axis title. 
Let's go over to size and properties and alignment. And we're going to say vertical text direction to horizontal. So it's sideways. It goes down the page. There you go. And just close out your task pane when you're done. Okay, good. We're just rolling right along here. Question 17, apply the general number format to values on the vertical axis titles. I'm going to come down here, right click, okay, format axis. Come down here to number. And we're going to format this as a general, which is essentially an unformatted style. Use the default values for format code and links. Okay, we'll just do that. Close it out. We just took away our formatting. Question 18. On the vertical axis of the cluster column chart, define 20 as the major units and 5 as the minor units. Okay. All right. Let's see. We're going to go over to chart elements. And let's see here. Let's just right click and get my thing out of the way here. And format chart area. Okay. And let's see. Size and properties. Text options. Uh, let's see here. Effects. I think we're going to go here. Properties. Um, let's see here. Let's pause for a second. <clears throat> 